folks, it's Shell here. You might remember me by my Dragon Prince theories I did on this channel, but today I'm doing something a bit different. I was lucky enough to attend a screening of the world premiere of the first two episodes of the second season of Hilda at the New York Children's International Film Festival. For those who don't know, NYCIFF is a wonderful event that takes place over the course of a few weeks in New York that supports the creation of thoughtful and creative film aimed at children ages 3 to 18. The beginning of Hilda's first season got their start at NYCIFF initially, so it was only natural that they would premiere there for their second season. Right off the bat, if you were hoping I was going to give some sort of announcement about a release date for season two, I'm sorry to say they just didn't give one, but what I will give you is my personal non-spoilery review for those of you who would like to experience Hilda season two on their own, followed by a synopsis of what happens in the first two episodes and my very spoilery review for those of you who can't wait to hear more about Hilda's fantastic adventures, but don't worry, I'll give a warning before I do that. My first impressions on these two episodes are basically, wow. Watching the show is like taking a straight dose of endorphins. As an adult who loves to watch children's cartoons, I felt like a child watching these episodes. Hilda doesn't have as mature of themes like the Dragon Prince, Shira, or even Steven Universe does. However, even Steven Universe didn't have more mature themes until its later seasons. That being said, in these first two episodes, it is apparent that there's a central theme of a general mistrust of authority. Without spoiling anything just yet, I feel as if Hilda is starting to question her own independence as more than just a child who plays with elves. There's a lot of challenge and conflict with adults so far this season, and with Hilda and her cohorts proving their thoughts and opinions as valid. They've only just started scratching the surface on this, and I have a feeling these themes and more will become much more complex as episodes and hopefully seasons go on. If you are a person who is sad about Steven Universe ending, watch this show. If you are a person who just wants to watch a sweet and pretty show with interesting lore that has a good plot but not too heavy, watch the show. If you are a person who watched the first season and is scared it's going to go downhill or plateau, watch the second season. I have a feeling that Hilda is just getting started. So now I feel like I'm going to explode with spoilers. So if you don't want to know what's about to happen in the first two episodes of season two of Hilda, click off this video immediately. Thanks for coming and obviously like and subscribe if you like the video, but leave and don't come back until you see these episodes for yourself if you're a person who doesn't like spoilers. So the first episode of Hilda season two is about Hilda going on a field trip with two Trollberg safety patrol rangers, one of whom is Eric Alberg, a descendant of Edmund Alberg, one of the founders of Trollberg. The episode starts out with Hilda finding a flaw in the wall that surrounds Trollberg in protection of the humans from the trolls. She ends up outside the wall by pure accident. Later when she comes home, her mom Mom Joanna asks her how her day has been, and Hilda lies about what she's been up to. There's some slight tension in this whole segment between Hilda and Joanna, since it is obvious that there's a distrust between the two of them. The Trollberg Safety Patrol Rangers show up at their house unexpectedly to tell Hilda that she won a contest to spend a day with them patrolling because of a paper she wrote about a great adventure she had. After reflecting on the paper, Joanna comments about how she didn't know that had happened to Hilda. The next day, Hilda goes on the mission with the Rangers, and while at first she's excited about the grand adventure, she soon becomes disillusioned with how inept the rangers seem to be with the world around them and how easily they make wrong and dangerous decisions. Eventually, the truth comes out and Hilda finds out that they are intentionally running after making these situations worse or dangerous so that they can have a better story and get some glory back in Trollberg. At multiple points throughout this trip, Hilda starts to wonder why the wall exists at all around Trollberg. She comments even at one point that this was the trolls land that the humans landed on and knocked them out of. I really enjoyed this episode. It seemed at first to be just a fun adventure and it quickly turned into a commentary on questioning authority and borders. I'm hopeful to see more development with Hilda questioning the wall itself openly. It's a very relative discussion to the real world, as well as an extremely political subject matter to include in a kids' television show. This episode is really pushing the boundaries and allowing children to watch a show and see an independent free thinker who doesn't always agree with adults. It gave the hot take that adults aren't always right. It's very empowering for developing minds to be able to make opinions for themselves, and I think Hilda, especially this episode in particular, does a great job of showing that. But the next episode is the one that really had me excited for the full next season of Hilda. It was simple yet so well written and interesting. The episode starts out with Frida and Hilda looking for the librarian. They go downstairs to the secret room in the library from season one and in that room they find stairs to another secret room which also has another secret staircase to another secret room which then has a staircase to another room and this goes on and on and on until eventually the two girls find themselves in a witch's tower school like thing 
They spot the librarian, but she's in a meeting with the three witches who make and enforce the laws that the witches go by, who for now I will call the council. Apparently, the librarian is in trouble. As the keeper of the books, she has to make sure that books are returned on time, and one book is so far overdue that if it is not back in 24 hours, she will be banished to some sort of void. Hilda and Frida are spotted by the witches, and they are brought into the adventure to find the overdue book with the librarian. On this adventure, they start to learn a lot about witches and the way they work in this universe. Obviously, a big question since the first season came out is about whether or not Hilda is a witch. This episode is all about that. Throughout this adventure, there are many moments where even Frida comments on how Hilda should start learning how to be a witch, exclaiming that it is perfect since she already has a familiar in wit- in- <laughs> in wig? In twig. Ay. <laughs> When faced with obstacles during this adventure, Hilda chooses impulsive and rash strategies to fight the problem, while Frida monitors, evaluates, and uses her knowledge on the world around her to fix and get past the problem. Eventually, they find the witch they are supposed to retrieve the book from, and it is realized that the witch is the librarian's old mentor. The librarian has been trying to avoid the witch because she has felt like a failure since she chose to be a librarian rather than a practicing witch, even after being taught so well by her. The older witch exclaims that she shouldn't feel bad, as being the keeper of books is just as important, if not more important, than casting spells. All of them bring back the overdue book to the council, but unfortunately, the spell that apparated them back to the council room made them only slightly late to the due date. The council banishes them to the void anyways. While they are all debating over whether or not this is fair, the banisher gets taken by a tentacle that snuck out of the void. Eventually, the door opens and the librarian Frida and Hilda fall inside the void. The librarian casts a few spells, but she can only do so much to stop them from falling and getting taken by the tentacle monster inside of the void. Eventually, Frida has an idea that saves them all by using past obstacles and the spell books around them to her advantage. When they return from the void, the elder mentor witch says that she would be delighted to teach one of the young girls to be a witch. Frida exclaims with joy because she thinks it's Hilda who is the witch, but the elder witch says that Frida is the witch and Hilda is her familiar. The council accepts this, but they also seem a bit unhappy that the tentacle monster couldn't be fed. My favorite part about this episode is how it subverted the usual expectation that the protagonist is always the most special one out of their group. While Hilda is adventurous and kind, she is also extremely reckless. For instance, if you go back and watch Tide Mice, Hilda is able to do the basics of the enchantment well, but without Frida's help, she couldn't have studied hard and done exactly what she needed to in this situation right. It makes perfect sense for Frida to, to be the witch, and yet I don't feel too shocked or even too knowledgeable about the plot twist. I am excited for what it means for the rest of the show to watch Frida go on this journey, as well as what it means for Hilda to be her familiar. Along with my pleasant surprise at the arc of this storyline, I really appreciated the dive into the librarian's character. Instead of just having her as a side character who made a silly mistake, they actually made her deal with a problem that I think a lot of young adults face nowadays. She had the choice of being a glorious witch, but instead enjoys being a librarian much more. She has some shame in not being up to the standards that she thought her mentor had for her, but instead, the mentor understands, loves, and supports her anyways. I think it's absolutely beautiful the empathy that they show towards that situation, since a lot of young people often struggle with identity and their place in this world. Finally, there is another questioning of authority here through the council. Now I will say, the council reminded me eerily of the Diamond Authority in Steven Universe. The way all three of their personalities worked were almost identical to blue, white, and yellow diamond. There seems to be an ulterior motive going on between their witch rules and whatever is going on with the void and the tentacle monster. I'm sure that we will learn more about that later as well. There is now an obvious distrust of the people who run the witchery world, and Frida and Hilda have already started to challenge it in this episode. Overall, I found these two episodes fun, sweet, and yet super relevant towards the topics that children should be forming opinions on. As an adult, I can't wait to see what ends up developing between Hilda and Joanna, Frida and Hilda, and Trollberg and the Witch Society as a whole. If you want to see us cover it when season 2 eventually airs on Netflix, make sure you give this video a like and comment to show your support for this topic, and subscribe to see when we post next. Have an animated day!